Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Today DIY, and today I'm gonna be doing something a little different. So I've actually, I've always done DIY kind of things, but electronics is like, in comparison to other things I used to do, kind of relatively new. I've only been doing it seriously for the past three to four years. But what I have been doing for a really long time, probably over a decade, is sewing. Uh, you've probably noticed some of these like cross stitches behind me in videos and maybe in b-roll. I'm a big cross stitcher. I love it. But I've also done proper sewing before. This is kind of a combo project where I cross stitched this lovely fox scene but then stitched up a hanger for it so it can hang nicely in my apartment. I also make a lot of bags. I just made this one and it's just a big shopping bag and it does have a little pocket inside there. I actually posted a picture of that bag when I finished it up a couple, like a month or two ago. And I got a message from my friends at Electro Smash, would I ever want to do sewing on my channel? Because they knew someone who d makes sewing kits. And I said, sure, that could be fun. And so I was introduced to Sew Your Kit, or S-Y-K, uh, and she makes sewing kits that are pretty accessible for people, mainly bags, which is actually my favorite kind of thing to sew. I thought it would be a cool opportunity to talk about sewing on the channel and also maybe make it into a wearables project to bring electronics into the picture. So the kit I'm gonna make from Sew Your Kit is the backpack. I thought that would be fun. I've never done wearables. I just haven't. In preparation for that, I actually made like a little almost kind of test bed of uh, wearables where I have a uh, Struggle Playground Express and the zipper and I followed along with a tutorial by Becky Stern where basically you take conductive thread and put it around one of the zipper hooks here and when you pull the zipper then you can use like cap touch to turn on like lights or things like that. You can't do anything that requires a lot of current obviously but like cap touch things like that work. So I did this and it, it kind of worked but I think I'm gonna keep it kind of simple and maybe revisit the zipper idea for a later project because as I said, this is my first wearables project. This also isn't my own pattern. So I, I think to keep things simple, I'm gonna keep it simple. Uh, and I'm gonna still use NeoPixels, but instead I'm gonna use a Gemma because a Gemma is really ideal for things like this because it already has the switch on there. It has a processor and everything. So basically like you just, if you just need like one or two things hooked up, you have enough pins. So I can turn on the power switch here and then you can see that the NeoPixel is going to do this kind of like color chase thing and then it'll turn off. And I'm keeping it red because the way that um, the fabric is for this, it's very thick and I think it will diffuse nicely. So my first impressions with this kit uh, so far, I think it would be really good for beginners because she takes care of something that is probably the hardest thing to do, I think, although it sounds really simple on the surface, and that is cutting out the fabric. When you get the kit, everything is already cut out and labeled, so you don't have to worry about measuring or anything like that. Now she sends all the components to that you need, uh, like zippers and stuff. However, I'm an idiot, and I was playing with a zipper, and I pulled off the zipper head, uh, and yeah, uh, because they're cut like to length, like. It's hard to, it's really hard to fix a zipper head. You can do it, but you kind of need like a little bit more length and you have to be able to cut it. So I just got, I got some, some new zippers and this was also when I was thinking that I was going to be doing the, the zipper like conductive thread circuit. So yeah, I'll be using these zippers. <laughs> these aren't the ones she sends out in the kit, but the instructions she includes are also very nice. Uh, they are very visual, which I enjoy. Um, they actually remind me a lot of my favorite sewing book series, and that's by Aranzi Aranzo. Uh, and as you can see, like, they use, um, really visual patterns as well. And w this is actually the bag pattern I used, um, for that bag I showed you a minute ago. Uh, and like, it's just very visual and very easy to follow along. And I actually want to ask her if she's ever heard of this, because her patterns are very similar, which I'm very into. And this is a well-loved book. <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of nervous about this project just because it's, I've never done this before. <laughs> like I've sewed a lot, but I've never sewed like in the concept of like a wearables project. And also I don't want to mess up the kit. And yeah, because usually like my sewing is a little bit more freeform. I'm not necessarily following along with the kit. Uh, so yeah, it'll be an experiment. 
Uh, let's, let's hope it all goes okay. Okay, so first thing was first, how to get the Gemma NeoPixel ring circuit into this bag. Uh, I decided on sewing it to the bag lining so that when the outer fabric was sewn to the lining, the ring would be nested inside and the Gemma and battery could live inside the bag but still be accessible. I must confess, I don't have a holder in place for the Gemma yet, but it should be fairly simple to throw in. So I basically measured where the middle of the top half of the bag was and then centered the ring. I used washi tape to hold the ring and wires in place and then adjusted my zigzag stitch on my machine to be extra wide to be able to clear the wire and the NeoPixel ring comfortably. So I basically stitched very slowly to secure the wire and the ring. For both, I mainly use the hand wheel rather than the foot pedal. I can sometimes be a bit too aggressive with the pedal, and this was fairly tense work. As it was, a couple of times I did hit the ring's PCB with the needle, which is not great for the machine nor the board. After stitching, I pushed the threads in between the NeoPixels so that they wouldn't cause any diffusion issues. Overall, I'm pretty happy with stitching the electronics in place. I did it a bit on a whim, but it turned out much better than I think glue, velcro, or other things would have. I did a quick test to make sure everything was still working, and it was, so it was time to fill up my bobbin with the fiery orange thread and actually start stitching the backpack. So I followed the instructions as gospel, and I have to say they were very well written, easy to understand. Uh, first up, you stitch the lining and main fabric together. This is always fun since you can just kind of zoom around the edges. The backpack has two zippers, as I mentioned. The first is for the front pocket. These giant fabric clips are really helpful and starting to get more popular. Uh, there's name brand ones, but they can get a bit spendy. So the ones I'm using are actually from a bulk pack I got off of Amazon. Uh, they work the same. It's, it's literally just a clip. Always important when you're stitching a zipper to change to your zipper foot. Otherwise, things can get pretty ugly. Most machines will come with one. It's one of the more popular pressure foots. Then here is some top stitching on the zipper to make things nice and neat. Here I'm stitching the top of the main piece of fabric where the electronics are. I did this later than the rest of the stitching since I was still not 100% convinced on how I was going to seal everything up. I ended up just leaving a little gap for the wires to come out the top, uh, careful to go slow on the seam with the wires. Now things are starting to get interesting joining up our first fabric pieces. It was really handy that Anna labels all of the fabric pieces and those numbers are referenced throughout the instructions. Uh, so here I'm piecing the pocket to the front panel and then the other piece is kind of a lip to cover the pocket zipper. A really nice detail. And then I'm measuring where folds should be and using those fabric clips again. And then zipper number two, the main zipper. This was a bit tricky since I was avoiding the wires, so there is a slight gap there, but it shouldn't affect the structural integrity of the zipper. I used one of those clips to keep myself focused on the wire location. Uh, I can tend to zone out when stitching. And then some top stitching. This time washi tape marked my wires. After that tense stitching, some carefree zigzag for the top bag piece, which was then sewn to the zipper and then got the top stitch treatment. Uh, this marked the first time I could kind of move on from worrying about the electronics so I could just relax and stitch. Here we're going to the interior of the bag with the pocket and measuring against the back panel for placement. Uh, the measurements are in millimeters, but that's fine for me, even being in the States, because I really prefer using millimeters for stitching. It's a lot easier than trying to use inches, and when you get into the math of measuring and figuring out the center, it's just so much easier. I didn't film this because the light in my kitchen is awful, but you iron creases into the pocket piece so that you can just top stitch it. I should also mention that I ironed all the fabric, as you always should, and at various points I ironed in creases and folds to make things a bit easier. They don't tell you how much ironing is actually involved in stitching. I think they'll, they'll think it'll scare you away. Now joining up the back panel fabric since the pocket is stitched on. Here's the first bit of hardware, some D-rings. Uh, these get attached to the back panel and will eventually aid in holding the straps. And speaking of the straps, here they are. A lot of ironing was needed for these since they're basically a series of folds and then top stitching. I have to say this was the messiest bit of my stitching on this project. I had a real hard time keeping them straight while stitching, so it's all a bit crooked. Uh, I think I was also starting to get a little tired. 
And here are the strap adjusters, not sure on the proper name, but if you've ever used a backpack, then you know what they are. Uh, these then get box stitched onto the straps, where my messy stitching continued to run amok. Here the D-rings are sewn in, and then they'll be caught into the main seam when the back and front are sewn together. And here the straps are sewn in. Uh, I stitched over them four times, since as the instructions stated, all the weight will be here, basically. Uh, although I don't plan on carrying around dictionaries or bowling balls. Another piece of fabric is stitched on to hide the strap attachment and act as the top of the bag. It's a very clean design, which I appreciate. Here I'm marking out some squares to cut out from the bag. This allows for rounded corners. Uh, I cut through all four layers for this, and I really shouldn't have because I didn't have the layers lined up as they would be in their final iteration, but luckily my measurements seemed to be pretty on, so I didn't run into any issues. So now I'm unzipping the zipper so that when I stitch up the sides, I'll be able to turn it right side out. Uh, you sew the right sides together so that the seam will be on the inside of the bag. Uh, sewing always lets you give your brain a bit of a puzzle to solve, always having to keep five steps ahead in mind with every stitch. And here's the final run. The clips were wonderful here since pinning through four layers, especially with the heavier fabric, would have been an absolute nightmare. I've bent so many traditional pins doing this in the past. And now the rounded corners. You just kind of stitch across, and when you turn it out, you'll have magical, beautiful corners. And speaking of, here's the big reveal. And here is the finished bag. This was a really satisfying sewing kit. Um, I'm not sure I'd recommend the backpack for beginners, though. They're, as you saw throughout the build, um, is it a build? Assembly? Throughout the assembly, there's a lot of different things going on. She does have some, like, smaller kits, so I do think the fact that the fabric comes, like, pre-cut and everything, and she has those, like, graphical instructions, like, it definitely is cool for beginners, but maybe, maybe not the backpack. You can, you can work up to the backpack. How about that? You can work up to the backpack. I think I'm probably most proud of the fact that I got the wear, the NeoPixel ring in there. I didn't sew any, over any of the wires, and it's, like, working. Uh, the only thing that, well, it needs to be better, <laughs> the fact that the Gemma's just kind of hang in free form right now inside the actual bag, that's not 100% ideal. So if I just get like a little pocket thing, I could even just pin it to inside the bag and it'll be all set. But definitely like finessing how to get the NeoPixel to stay in there and everything and keep the wires safe and everything like that, that was definitely the hardest part, was also probably the most fulfilling part as well. And this actual sewing part was so much easier after that. Once I was done with the front panel, that was just, everything else was like a breeze. I was like, oh, thank God. But uh, that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. I'll have a link down to the Sew Your Kit website. You can see the other things she has up there. But thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Let's go take my backpack, go on a little walk.